Hi folks, this is Nat, and in this video lesson we're going to be learning to use a representational thing called a box diagram to help us sort of visualize what's happening in word problems and then to be able to write equations more easily. And I think the easiest way to kind of think about this is going to be to give us some examples. Um, so here we've got John had eight more chainsaws than Tammy. Now, one thing that's still going to be important is the idea of keywords because they can help us figure out what's going on. Um, but one of the things that I hope you've noticed is that you pay, if you pay too much attention to keywords, they can sometimes be a little bit misleading. The same keyword in the question might mean something entirely different than the, a keyword in one of the sentences. Um, so a box diagram can help us make sense of things that might normally trip us up. And here's how that works. If I say John had eight more chainsaws than Tammy, the first thing I'm going to do is make a box that represents the numerical uh, information here. So it sounds like John has some chainsaws, and so I'm going to make a bar that represents the number of chainsaws that John has, and I'm going to label that bar. John's chainsaws. When I make a bar diagram, um, it's really important that I label everything because otherwise it's going to start to not make sense to me. Now I've chosen to make my bar nice and big here, um, but it's possible to make much smaller bars. Um, it's really up to you. Some of you might want to make bars that perfectly represent the space you're dealing with um, or the numbers you're dealing with. I think they're more representational, but it's up to you kind of how you use them. The next thing I'm going to think about is this idea of Tammy. Tammy has some chainsaws too, and I don't know how many Tammy has either, but it sounds like from the sentence that if John had eight more chainsaws, Tammy had less than that. Um, so I'm going to separate this box that represents John's chainsaws into a smaller piece that I'm going to say represents Tammy's, because I know that Tammy has fewer. And then finally I've got this information, eight more, that I'd like to work into this box diagram or bar diagram. And to do that, I'm just going to represent the difference between their saws, which is this space right here. I'm going to represent that with the number eight. Those are the eight chainsaws that separate the two of them. From here I can think about what do I know and what do I not know. Um, any information that I've put on my diagram that I know is a constant. Anything that I don't know, I'm probably going to make into a variable. So John's chainsaws doesn't have a number that we know attached to it, so I'm going to say that that's equal to J for John's chainsaws. And on the other side of this, we've got Tammy's saws. I'm going to call that T because, again, we don't know them. Now, hopefully looking at this diagram, I can come up with a couple different ways of representing what I see here. One way of looking at this is that John's bar is the biggest, and if I wanted to make it equal Tammy's bar, I'd have to take this 8 away from it. So the way I would represent that is that John's chainsaws minus 8 would equal Tammy's chainsaws. That big bar minus the 8 would equal the small bar. So J minus 8 equals T. The other way I could represent this is that Tammy's bar, if I added on the 8, is the same as John's bar. So Tammy plus 8 could equal John's bar. And those are actually the same idea, and we'll talk about that more in another lesson. Two ways of representing the same idea, both of which I can see from my bar diagram. The other thing that I would point out is that those, that's basically what we were, would have looked at if we fo or gotten, sorry, if we focused exclusively on kind of the key word ideas. We have John's chainsaws, Tammy's chainsaws. Um, had is kind of like is or was in this case. It's our equals word. Um, but John's chainsaws equal eight more than Tammy's, so Tammy's plus eight. And again, that's the same equation we saw a second ago. We've just gotten it from our bar diagram, which kind of backs up our, you know, what might have been another way of getting the same thing. 
So keywords can still be important. This is just another way of sort of visualizing the problem. So here's another one. Bill has five times as many rutabagas as Elizabeth does. Um, so this is going to be a comparison between, again, two things. The idea of the rutabagas that Bill has. And again, why don't I make a bar to represent the number of rutabagas Bill has. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger here. So the rutabagas Bill has. And then I need to compare that to the number that Elizabeth has. And to do that, again, I'm probably looking for keywords in here. Um, so times is important. Bill has five times as many. Um, to me, that sounds like Bill has a lot and Elizabeth has fewer, which is an important thing to recognize. Um, if he has five times as many, I might start by dividing Bill's rutabagas into five roughly equal boxes. And your boxes don't have to be perfect. We'll just remember that they represent the same thing. So if he's got five groups of rutabagas, then Elizabeth is only going to have one group of rutabagas. So here's Elizabeth's rutabagas. And that's actually it for our bar diagram. What we do now is start to think about, well, what relationship or relationships am I seeing here? Well, if I take Elizabeth's rutabagas, let's call it E because we don't know how many she has, and let's call Bill's B because we don't know many how he, sorry, we don't know how many he has. If I take Elizabeth's rutabagas and I represent that as E, if I look at my diagram, I'd need five times as many rutabagas to make the number that Bill has. So I could say that E times 5 equals B. Elizabeth's rutabagas times 5 would equal Bill's rutabagas. And all of that comes from my bar diagram. Here's one more slightly more complicated example. Um, the plumber charges $20 every hour plus $90 for his initial inspection. Um, we can look again for keywords to kind of help us figure out what's going on. Um, I see the idea of every, every hour, um, and then plus $90. So $20 every hour plus $90. Um, and I could probably piece this together from keywords, but let's try to make a bar diagram here. I might make my first little chunk of this be a $20 bar. This is a bar that represents $20. Um, and I'm going to write a 20 in it. So 20 is apparently his hourly rate. So if I'm trying to figure out how much he charges, it's going to be $20 for the first hour, another $20 the second hour, another $20 the third hour, and so on forever until we get to his last hour, which is going to be be $20 as well. And that's going to be how much he charges. What's kind of missing is this sort of thing in the middle, which is how many hours is he going to work. Um, and that's an unknown. That's a variable. Maybe it's a lot, maybe it's a little, but if you take everything, every time he charges 20 bucks, all his hours worked, that makes the money that he gets for the hours. Now there's this extra little thing going on here, it sounds like, where he's going to add an extra $90. And I can put that in my bar diagram as well. I can just tack on an extra 90 at the end. So he's repeatedly charging, it looks like, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20, $20 as many hours as he works, and then just $90 one time. And if I take all of that put together, all the $20 he charges and the 90 that is going to be the total he charges. And hopefully we can see how this bar diagram helps us kind of visualize this problem. Um, if I was going to describe this, all I'd have to do is say, um, well, the big bar represents the total cost of hiring the plumber. Let's call that T for total. Okay, and then what I pay is going to be equal to all these 20s, which depend on the number of hours he works. So 20 times H, so however many H's it is, however many hours, plus this 90 over here on the end. 
and that's going to be my equation for the amount the plumber charges. All right, here's some practice problems for you to work on. I want to really stress this. Um, I know you could probably do this a different way, um, but I, we're practicing here making bar diagrams, so you need to make a bar diagram and write an equation for each of these. So I should have, see three di bar diagrams and three equations. All righty, good luck.